Hi everybody, Bobby from the Rabbitry Center, and today we're going to go over rabbit ears, teeth, fur, and feet. We're going to talk a little bit about vent color and you know what's a receptive doe look like. We'll even clip a rabbit's nails, and if you stay with us to the end, we'll share a few winter breeding tips and just a few things that we use around here that make our life a lot easier. Here we go. So a really simple way to know, you know, what kind of shape your rabbit's in, and it just seems almost too easy, but just run your hand over it. If you just pet your rabbit, you can really feel if it's bony, or if it's, you know, if it's too skinny, or maybe it's really fat. It's, it's just too obese, you don't want it. You know, you want it somewhere in the middle. You want it nicely proportioned, and you can feel, just by, you know, getting all your rabbits out and feeling, most of them are gonna feel a certain way and you'll know when one uh, may need a little bit more feed. So just running your hand over the back of the rabbit, uh, just pet your rabbit and, and give it a feel and see what's happening. You know, starting at the very top of your rabbit with the ears, uh, they're, they're big for a reason. They, they serve two purposes, one is to work as satellites to the, a rabbit can turn its ears 270 degrees and that's so it can prevent uh there's a lot of predators and you know they have to survive their job is to continue to reproduce and balance the ecosystem so they they use those ears to survive so when it gets really hot, rabbit's ears work as air conditioners. The, the veins, you'll see the veins really pop when it's hot. The rabbit's ears are doing their thing and they're controlling the temperature in your rabbit. When it comes to your rabbit's ears, you wanna make sure that there's no brown spots or scabs. Um, you know, that could be ear mites and you could sometimes see your rabbit shaking its ear a lot or, you know, tilting its head a little bit and that would indicate that it may have mites. Now you'd want to treat that, just smother the mites, just like you would spray dormant oil on your fruit trees and smother the, the, the bugs. You do the same thing with the ear, you just smother it with some vegetable oil, something like vegetable oil, throw a couple drops in there and, uh, and make sure you treat every rabbit you know, near that rabbit so as a preventative, but it's not gonna hurt them. So when it comes to checking the skin and making sure that it doesn't have any fleas or mites, you want to check the stomach and the haunches behind the ears. You know, make sure there's no chewed fur or anything like that. So when you're checking rabbit's feet out, they should be firm and tough, like a callus pad. And you know, there shouldn't be any bare skin or anything like that. You know, I, we actually had a rabbit one time with sore hocks and it was really tough. We tried to wrap them with, with wrap and we would try to put bedding down for, of straw. Let's look at Look at the feet. Now these feet should be hairy. They shouldn't have any sores on them, which they don't. They should be calloused. I can feel how they're tough, padded. These are good looking feet. It's a good looking buck. So just checking over your rabbit in general, you know, it shouldn't have any scabs or redness or, or skin that's irritated, um, you know, no sores, anything like that. You can check their skin or their haunches or their, you know, behind their ears. You know, you're always checking for fleas or mites, but if you have your rabbits in cages, you probably won't have that problem unless you introduced a rabbit. Uh, maybe you, you bred a, a doe with a, a buck from a new farm, you just got it, and maybe it was um, running around on the ground or it, had, it was colony raised. So it's possible, but you know, you just want to check the skin and make sure there's no fur mites or, or fleas. So when it comes to trimming your rabbit's nails, you can just use cat clippers. It's really simple. You can just trim your rabbit's nails in your lap, sitting in a chair. So we'll trim the rabbit's front paws with clippers just holding it. We'll put the rabbit's rear feet 
hanging off the table and then we could we clip them that way we trim them that way they're okay Ooh, that one's long Rabbit with her feet, her toes are right off the edge like this. Let me see if I can. You can see the toe. When it comes to checking your rabbit's vent, you know, sometimes you will see this waxy brown buildup. This, it, it's the scent glands. Sometimes you'll see, you know, some rabbits will keep themselves clean, you'll never see it, but other rabbits you'll see the buildup on each side and you just want to clean that out with a Q-tip. It's just those scent glands and those scent glands will secrete that, that smelly brown waxy substance. So what about colors? What does it mean when, when a rabbit's bright pink? Well, that means that she's really receptive. So your doe will actually go from a bright pink to a red purple and the darker it is, it means the closer you are to the cycle ending. So when you see um, maybe a gray pink um, or an off pink, you'll, you'll know that, you know, just wait five, seven days and the, the cycle will restart again. Now rabbits are induced ovulators, so what does that mean? It means that you could get false litters. You know, how many times have you seen fall offs and everything was, uh, you know as it should have been and then come you know maybe they make a nest really early like on day 18 um, you'll know that that's a false litter um, you know, even even petting a rabbit or being near a buck that can get a rabbit to have a false litter you know you'll see these from time to time where you didn't even breed a doe and she'll still have a false litter you know lots of things even like I said petting a rabbit can can get a rabbit to um, induce ovulation. So rabbits, just like humans, they're born with uh, baby teeth and they fall out. I think it's 16 baby teeth and they'll fall out within days. And eventually they'll get their six incisors, uh, just like us, we have four on top, four on bottom. But they have a total of 28 teeth, counting their cheek teeth, these teeth that you never see. but those teeth in front, they should be wearing straight. They should be growing. Uh, they shouldn't be crooked. And there is something called uh, buck teeth or wolf teeth when it comes to rabbits. And you may have to see a vet and get those cut down. You can even use a Dremel and do it yourself. And there, there's videos on YouTube. You can see uh, people cutting their, their rabbit's teeth down uh, because of that. So be in February here in Michigan, this is kind of like the deep freeze. We're right in the middle of it. We have one more month of super cold. It it's actually got up to about 18. That was like a heat wave. We really don't have much else to do other than stockpile harvesting tools and build cages. I build cages in the basement. I'm just cutting all the pieces and I'll build the sides and I'll fold them up and just worry about the top and bottom later. I'm out here always putting in the, the straw blankets, trying to keep the rabbits comfortable. Um, the water is just a really pain in the butt. But we have gloves, I wanted to mention some gloves. You start getting these gloves wet, and this, these kind of temps, when it's around five degrees, I mean, it doesn't take much, and you have to go inside because you, you start to feel your nerves shutting down. One and thing it, I recommend for winter time is insulated, waterproof gloves. I'll link these down in the description below. Uh, this has made things so much easier. You know, I can't tell you how many times we were using leather gloves or our winter gloves dipping these bowls into the buckets of water. And until we got these gloves, 
Uh, boy, you know, if you're out here more than 15 minutes, this time of year, when it's around zero, your fingertips will will get so cold, you can feel the, the frostbite setting in. You get inside and your fingers will burn for the next 10 minutes. So that's why I recommend these insulated waterproof gloves. Really makes your life a lot easier in the wintertime. Sure. Uh, one thing that we're doing for our runs to make sure that we keep the snow out, you know, all the snow right now is completely packed down because we've put blankets over it to uh, make it so rabbits aren't bringing snow into the kindling totes and chilling their litter, you know, and, and keep getting all that straw in there wet because that's really tough to stay warm right now when it's this cold. And, you know, we actually would be shutting down our breeding if we didn't have our kindling totes. All that snow and everything, it actually helps the kits. It's, it like works as insulation. So it makes it possible. So it's right around zero degrees. Uh, these litters are doing fine. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna cover them up because it's only it's only a few degrees. So Mama checking on her litter. Get away! Now when I inspected that litter I made it quick because it's right around one, two degrees right now. For the last week it's been hovering around zero. And these kindling totes, if it wasn't for these kindling totes, I would have to just breed in February and then the rabbits could kindle in March when the temperatures are a little bit better, a little bit warmer. The difference between these kindling totes and the cages is these kits can break the cluster, move around this nesting box. There's a little bit of heat. Thank you so much for watching today and please let me know if there's anything that I missed or I forgot I didn't mention. Uh, I always appreciate it when people take the time to, to make comments and if you know the answer to those questions down there, please jump in and answer those. I'm certainly not going to disagree or argue with anybody, especially if it's working for you, you're, you're doing something right. So um, if you guys haven't already, please check out our Amazon storefront. Lots of good products in there. We work really hard at making sure everything we use is in there. Uh, we have tons of rabbitry stuff, rabbitry books, deer hunting and beekeeping and gardening. And uh, take a look if you haven't already. Really proud of that. I take a lot of time to make sure um, good products are in there. So thank you again for watching. And until next time, we'll see you on the next video.